Hi, everyone. Um, hope you're well. Thanks for joining us. Um, this is basically a portrait class. So this is part two of uh, the first one. So we have two. It's uh, Portrait 101. Um, and I'll kind of go through what we did in the first class a little bit and then move on to what we're going to do next to finish up. So if you missed the first one, um, it is available on the website, the Michaels website, and also on YouTube. Um, and I think they put a link in the chat, but if you just look up Portrait 101, Michael's Prismacolor, you'll be able to find it. Um, just to tell you a little bit about myself. So I am an illustrator and a fine artist. Um, I do different kinds of work. I work in different kinds of media. I work in oil, acrylic, colored pencil, marker. Um, and I've done stuff for various things, you know, children's books, um, film posters and other things. Um, but I also uh, am a principal designer for a uh, Newell brand. So I do a lot of work with Prismacolor um, and Sharpie who are under their umbrella brands um, and others like Elmer's and things like that. Um, so I love Prismacolor and I loved them before I became a designer for them. Um, you know, they're, everything that they make is very accessible and easy to use. Um, their colors are amazing. Um, they make great gifts during the holidays. I actually am buying some for some friends. Um, and uh, they're just, they're overall great to use. So I'm gonna go through, you know, how these, the, the color pencil works with the paper. It's a di different little detail things that I think are really helpful. Um, this is a beginner class, so don't feel intimidated. Um, and I, again, I'm gonna go through what we did in the first one. So hopefully it'll make a lot of sense um, where we're at now, if you had missed the first one. Um, and just to reiterate, um, you know, these are some of the handles. So you can actually check out more of my work on my website, fluxartist.com. Um, I've got, you know, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, Flux Artist. Um, and then also um, at Prismacolor, you can tag back to, um, or, you know, my handle as well. And then make it with Michael's hashtag is another good one. Just to promote what you've worked on if you want to. I mean, at the end, you know, I'd love to see what you guys have done. Um, Okay, so we're going to switch over to the other camera. Um, and just to kind of, I'm going to do a little recap of what we did before. So this is the reference image, and it is included, um, I believe, in the chat. I know it was included with the lesson. And essentially, what we did was starting from the very beginning of how to draw a portrait, we worked on the head shape. So first, it was with a very light pencil. Um, you can use a 2H, a 6H. All the H pencils are hard lead, so they're very light. Um, and they're, you know, they're nice because once you've colored over them, they're hard to see, which is good. Um, and started with an oval shape and then created a line for the eyes, um, created a sort of line for where the nose goes and a line across where the mouth goes, constantly looking back at the reference for um, the placement. So where everything which is supposed to go. And, you know, after that, we started with um, the base colors, which are the lightest colors. So every medium works differently. Um, I actually, so my daughter um, plays the cello and she has friends that play the violin and someone that plays a viola. And it's similar to that if you guys, any of you do any kind of music or classical music, where like, you know, one person, the A note is on the other side or, you know, the other, other instrument, it's on the opposite side. It's similar to that in that, let's say you're painting in acrylic or oil, you would start darker and work lighter. Um, the difference with colored pencils is you do the opposite. Um, and it's much easier to start lighter because it's much more forgiving. Um, if you started dark, you're, you're kind of stuck with what you put down. Um, but if you start light and work your way up gradually to darker colors, um, it, it works really well. And you get nice blends by layering those colors. So, um, I tried to break this down into three layers, even though there's probably more here, working from light to dark. So we started with some lighter colors for her skin, um, lighter colors for her lips. Um, same thing with the hair, that's just a base color. Her hair will not be pink, but there are some pink notes in her hair, <coughs> excuse me. And, um, and then the same with the, the eyebrows and things. So we slowly worked a little bit darker in there. and We're just gonna continue that throughout. So um, with that, I'm going to go back to the lip color. Um, that's kind of where we left off. 
I had started off with uh, the base color of 929, um, which is pink. And you know, it's a nice light pink. It's a good base color. Um, I'm using the Exacto Powerhouse Electric Sharpener, if you guys are curious. Uh, it's awesome. Um, it's nice because it's vertical. It's, you know, it doesn't spill, it has a lock, and it also um, stops when it's done sharpening. So, um, but anyway, back to the lips. So now I'm gonna take this darker color, 1031 Henna, and start to put in some of this detail. So if you notice with the lips, there's some detail here, and it all kind of goes in a certain direction, right? It kind of follows the shape of the lip itself. We're gonna sort of mimic that using this. Um, you know, kind of going in here and giving it some darker tones. Um, some of the things that I mentioned before were, you know, when you work with color pencil, a lot of times it leaves excess wax or, you know, it's the same with like regular pencil. It leaves some excess debris. You can wipe it off with your hand, you can blow it off, whatever works. Um, you know, with using your hand, you gotta be careful that it doesn't um, leave a smear on your artwork. Um, but you know what I'm doing here is kind of looking at my picture as a reference, going back and forth. It doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but using light pressure at first and then eventually going darker in the darker areas. So, um, and you know, some of these, like there are different features in the lips where it gets a little darker, almost like a line throughout. Um, I'm kind of going in there and exaggerating that a little bit. And then also, you know, I'm following the direction of the lip structure itself. But when it comes to like down here, there's almost like a little bit of an outline, which is nice. It helps um, bring in that shadow. So right at the very bottom, there's a bit of a shadow underneath. And we're gonna kind of tie that in there. And then the same here, just following up. And please, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We um, have a moderator who will you know, basically help me with those. Um, as we go along. And I'm just following this around. So you get the idea, um, you know, going back in with some lighter pressure again. And, you know, the, the trick is really to start with light pressure at first, especially if you haven't got a lot of experience with color pencil. And then you can always go darker. So start light and then go darker. Same here. So I'm doing a couple of different shading techniques. One is just kind of putting a line in, right? That's like hatching, working with lines. But then also if you kind of scrub back and forth, that's like a scribble shading technique. Um, and sometimes that comes in handy for getting smoother shadows. So like there's a nice smooth shadow here on the left side of her lip. And then the same up here. And just underneath the bottom right there. And then we'll continue on the other side. And you know, it's important when you have something where you're putting in a lot of detail to sharpen constantly. If you feel like, you know, it's a little hard to get your detail. That's usually what the issue is. You just need to quickly sharpen your pencil. All right. So obviously, if you look at your picture, you're going to see that it's darker in those shadows that we have here. And that's good. Um, we'll eventually make those darker. We'll put in some black later. But for now, we're building it up. Um, you know, in the same way, basically, if a sculptor has clay and the clay, you know, they just move things here and there. They, they manipulate it. At first, it doesn't look like it. Um, it needs more fine tuning. That's what we're doing. We're just kind of fine tuning as we go along. So, um, and just add a little bit more here. And you can always go back and add more later. So, um, you know, even some of these, the skin blending, we're going to probably do a little of adjusting to that later too. Um, yeah. So, that's it pretty much for the lips right now at this point. And now we're going to move on to um, the eyes. So with the eye, I started with a really light color. 
I started with 914, which is cream. Um, but I'm going to move up to 945 and 941. Um, and I'm doing both of these because there is some warmer tones and there's some darker tones in here. Um, you know, and obviously there's black. So we're going to save the black for last, just like with all of this. And I'm going to start with 941 and kind of draw in where the eye would be. So we've got already some color down. And just putting in that main circle um, with some just sort of gentle strokes, getting in darker as I get around the edge. I'm going to put in where the pupil will be, the center of the pupil. Um, and actually leave a little white area for the highlight. Um, doing a little exaggerating here, you know, the eye itself, the picture doesn't have a big highlight, but we're going to add one. Um, there's generally with an eye, uh, a highlight at the top, and then right below it, underneath the center of the eye, there'll be a light area underneath. And that'll make more sense once we go along a little further. So now that I've got that in there, I'm going to switch to 945, which is Sienna Brown. And very gently shade, um, you know, kind of go all the way at first. And then go a little bit darker by putting more pressure down. And if you notice with this eye, it's darker on the outside and lighter on the inside, mostly light underneath. So I'm going to actually use this brown for most of this upper area. The reason being is because the eyelid leaves a shadow on the eye itself, um, which is usually why it's darker up there. So here I'm going to go a little, leave this sort of white space, lighter space underneath the eye. I'm going to move my hand so it clears up a little bit. John, that looks great. What a difference that eye makes. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah, I was saying, um, you know, the last class that we did, um, it, it kind of, you know, as you're working, it can look a little strange or creepy. My kids usually get creeped out when they see um, a work that I'm doing that like is in mid, um, it's just midway, halfway through because you don't have all the elements there. Um, but there are a couple things with like, so for human details or any kind of animal with eyes, um, the eyes are really something that sells it. Um, the other part is black. When you fin finally put black colors in, um, it really pulls everything together. So you'll see as we go along how that works out. All right. So again, I'm really just kind of like leaving the darkest part around the outside of the eye and having it sort of fade inward. All right. So that's the eye um, right there. And then now I'm going to move on to the skin. Um, so for that, I'm going to pull some colors here. I've got 943, which I believe I have here. Bear with me for a second. And ten thirty four. So let me just pull that one. And for everyone on the call too, we can drop in the chat all the different um, Prismacolor colors that John is using. Yeah, I think actually for this one, and I apologize, I'm going to switch over to 947. Um, and I missed up there. Sorry about that. But this is so 947 is dark umber. Um, and it's a really nice brown. So since we built up with our oranges and reds, um, we're going to go ahead and put in some shadows here, um, but using a dark brown. So we don't want to go super with like a lot of pressure, super um, heavy. But if you just basically start putting down some strokes with some light pressure, you can see where we can put in our shadows. Um, 
And, you know, just again, I'm reiterating that we're going lightly and following the form of the face here. So in other words, by following the form of the face, I mean, we're not gonna go like this. Um, we're kind of just creating a round structure to her face this way. John, we have a question to see the um, pencil sharpener, if you could put yes, that in. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to hold it, if you can see it. Actually, maybe switch cameras, and then we can see. Yeah, um, it's the X-Zacto powerhouse. Um, it looks a little like a coffee grinder, but it works really well. Um, it's great. So just continuing through with the same effect here, adding some shadows. And if you feel like, like, so for instance, now you're gonna see, um, you know, the, the shading changes a little. It looks a little um, desaturated. For those of you who don't know what that means, it means that it doesn't look as warm or, or reddish. Um, her skin tone does have those colors, but we're gonna go back and put those in. Um, don't worry about it if when you're putting in your shading that the colors don't look exactly perfect. So, and even though we're breaking it down into base colors, midtones, and shadows, there's a lot of back and forth that goes on to really make something look good. Um, don't worry if you're like, oh, I'm not following the method exactly. Trust me, I tend to jump around a lot myself. Um, I think if you uh, get too hung up on method, you uh, kind of put yourself, paint yourself into a corner that way. So adding a little bit more shadow here. And just to show you what I mean about bringing in some other colors, I'm gonna stop for a second and come back in here with a little bit of 1031, which is um, henna and add some of that to her skin tone here so that now it's less grayish looking. Um, it's a little bit more warm. And as you go, uh, these colors, you know, you can actually use your color pencils to blend everything, um, the previous ones underneath. So uh, they also, Prismacolor makes a really good colorless blender it works really well to do the same thing. Or you can even use a white color pencil to blend. It can make things look a little bit hazy, um, but you can always go back and change that after the fact. So. John, we had a question in the chat. Um, if the person that you are drawing has um, wrinkles, would you follow the form or use side to side motions? Or what's the best way to, to do that? That's a really good question. Um, I have to say that's probably more of an advanced technique kind of question. I think um, if you want to keep things simple with this, what we're doing here, um, you know, I think minimizing the wrinkles a little bit by squinting, you know, even what we're doing here is we're not putting in tons of detail. We're just kind of suggesting it. So, um, you know, uh, I think, because one thing that a lot of times they don't translate as well, details don't translate as well when you're um, working on human faces. Um, so I think squinting is one of the best ways, and I, I know I've mentioned in the previous one, um, to see beyond the details. You really, if you squint, you can see basic shapes. So if you squint and look at your reference and then go back to your artwork, um, it'll be really helpful um, because you're not so focused on the details and you kind of save those for last if you want to add them. All right, so now I'm gonna add a little bit of dark shadow here around her nose. And again, I'm using dark umber. Nostril here. There. 
So we've got a little bit of dark shadows on her skin, right at her nose. So here, usually, um, depending on the kind of photograph you're working with, there's a little bit of what's called reflected light underneath the base of the nose. And that's this little bit of light that comes right here. This is your another shadow that goes across. I'm going to soften this a little bit with the henna color, um, just so it doesn't look, you know, almost black. Um, and actually shade a little bit here too. All right. And then moving up to the eyes. I'm going to start putting in some shadows for the eyebrows using the umber color again. I'll move my hand so you can see a little bit better. And this, the same thing, um, the same thing I was doing with the lips, I'm actually creating the structure of the hair using the strokes of the pencil. Um, we'll go back in with black because obviously that's the color of the eyebrow. And then Add a little bit more shadow in here. Top of the eye. And I'm not really going to put in the eyebrow, the eyelashes yet. Um, those are really, you know, um, black almost. So we'll save that for the black and even some of the indigo blue color pencil. I'm going to go ahead in with the henna here, build those shadow in around the eye there. Because if you look, it's almost pinkish in color in the skin there. Um, I think even on the, in this, um, using Zoom, there's a little bit of a color shift. So if you guys are wondering, you know, why, if you're using the same colors I'm using and you're wondering why it might look a little different, there is a bit of a, a change there. So don't worry. Um, it's just a, a potential video issue. All right, so I'm gonna add some shadows here. Top of the eye, kind of start to frame the eye itself on the left-hand side, put a little shadow there. And I'm gonna wait till later to get to the ear. I really wanna focus on the face, so we'll see how far we get with this. Um, but if we don't get that far, you basically you're going to use the same technique uh, for the ear and everything else. So building up here, some shadow at the top of the head, forehead. Same thing here. And you know, what you'll notice too is as you draw more and more, if you haven't done this uh, very much, is that what you're creating isn't necessarily the thing you're looking at, it's your version of it. So, you know, I have more white space than she has in this picture and I'm okay with that. Um, it really is your personal preference how much you want to put in there and you might think like, this looks fine, I like it. Uh, that is great. So I'm gonna go back with some henna color here just to kind of bring in an almost orange tone to the skin there. So instead of going straight from yellow to brown, um, this gives me a little bit of layering of color. So colors like brown and black, you got to be careful of just going straight to those because they can tend to make skin look gray. Um, but if you put in a lot of warm tones underneath, you'll be a lot safer. So with that, and going back to my umber, even putting in some outline here for the top of the head, just like that. And then over here, same thing. Just to sort of drive it home a little bit more, um, kind of outline the face, it's very helpful. All right, so now that we've gotten this far, I'm gonna move on to um, the hair. So with me for a second while I find my color. Um, so with the hair, there's really only a one, other, one other color that I used, um, and it's blue. Um, and then eventually some black too. But if you look at this picture, 
Um, there's some blue notes, there's some pink notes, um, and then black, mostly blue. It's the lighting on her hair. Um, so we're going to use that, you know, basically using this indigo blue color, which is number 901, uh, go in and start putting in the hair structure. And I'm going pretty lightly. I mean, I'm not pressing super hard, um, but at least, you know, what you notice what I'm doing is I'm following the form of what the hair looks like, trying to create that using the strokes. And this is what I would call more expressive, you know, than if we were to just to do this realistically. Um, realistically, there's really not a lot of detail there in the picture, um, but I'm sort of creating hair texture for her using the pencil. Hey John, we had a question from the chat that said, would you use black around the iris in the eye or is that too harsh? And no, like yes. you're gonna do black at the end, but. Definitely, yeah. Um, the, I would save your black for last for that, but yeah, that's what we're gonna do at the very end. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. All right, so kind of see where we're at here with using the blue. All right, so basically got, you know, the bulk of the hair here. Um, I'm even gonna go in a little bit darker where it gets darker to the shadow and kind of build there. So this is the cool thing just like with regular pencil, with the way that you shade from light to dark, color pencils work the same way. Um, I'm working from light to dark, even with the same pencil itself. Um, you know, this is something that I think with pencil and color pencil is really unique, is you can kind of use the same color and just press harder on top of it and you can get your shading. It doesn't always work well with markers or the other, you know, materials, um, but it does with color pencil. So yeah, there we go. We got basically the hair mid-tone down. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna move on to, let's see. Um, with the lip 935. So I'm gonna move on to black actually. Before I do that, forgive me. I'm going to go on and move, go back to indigo blue and put a little bit of that in the eyelash because I just noticed that if you look at the picture, there's a lot of blue around her eyes. So I'm going to put a little of that in her eyebrow. And if you're wondering, like when you're looking at your reference, oh, how do I see color? You know, where, how do you know what colors to use? If you squint and the more that you work this way, you will be able to see the colors that are there. So in her eyebrows, there is blue, there's brown, there's black. Um, if you look at the picture, you know, you can see blue inside that black, even at, you know, the base of her, at the top of her lower eyelid, um, there's some blue there. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in and start to draw in the eyelashes as well. So, you know, it doesn't look like an eyelash until we get that black put in there but at least you can see the beginning of it. And then there's even some blue in here in the eye itself. Just a hint of it. Um, you know, and depending on your photograph, you might have more colors reflected in the portrait you're working on. Um, it all depends, obviously. All right. So, I'm going to finish up the eyelashes here. And I'm going to hold it up so you can see um, that, you know, it really, it's blue. These aren't finished, but once we put the black in there, it'll really drive it home. And then I'm also going to use this blue really lightly to give uh, the whites of her eyes some shadow. So if you look at the picture, um, you know, there's some shading underneath the upper eyelid. We're going to do that too, just using this blue. And, you know, it, it really helps create the form of the eye. And then 
the same on this side. Just a little bit like that. And left eye, same deal. Okay. So now we've got that down. Um, now I'm going to go in with black. So actually, before that, <laughs> I'm going to add a little shadow to her teeth too. Uh, so like, r I just realized right in here on the left and right hand side, you know, her teeth, it's not just white. Um, there's a little bit of shadow in there. So I'm going to use the blue to do that as well. And depending on your picture, you might have more or less detail on your teeth to work with. Um, this one is pretty simple. So it's kind of nice. All right, John, now. We, we got a question on the eyelashes too. Yeah. Um, do you have more trouble when drawing male versus female figures, um, especially when it comes to the eyelashes? Any tips, techniques for males versus females? I don't know. Um, you know, obviously her lashes are exaggerated. They're fake, you know, they're, they're put on. Um, but I would say that the one trick is to really focus on the upper eyelash as opposed to both lower and upper. <coughs> Excuse me, the lower ones, when you back away, aren't really visible that much. Um, that's why I just suggested them. You can actually see them you know, up close. And if you wanted to get that far into detail, you can. But since we're just working with sort of a simple drawing, we don't need them here. Um, that would be my only suggestion is, you know, if you want to put those in, they're going to be subtle. So I wouldn't overdo the, the lower eyelashes. I hope that is helpful. And then on the upper, is there like recommendation on length for males or? Uh, it all depends on their reference photo. So, you know, um, you know, because it really gender doesn't necessarily play a part, um, it seems with eyelashes. Um, some people have longer ones than others regardless. So um, I think, you know, it depends on what your reference is, your picture that you're working from, the person that you're drawing. Or even if you're drawing from life, um, I don't know how many people still sit still for uh, life drawing, but um, I would imagine it's not as many as they used to now that we can just easily take pictures. All right. That's so helpful. Now, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so now I'm going ahead and putting in some of the detail here with the eyelashes with the black. And I've got this nice layering of blue underneath so it doesn't look super flat or cartoony. Um, it looks it has a sense of realism to it. And then I'm going to do the same with the eye. I've got like a little outline here, some black here. Um, the one thing to keep in mind too is that, you know, the black color pencil, uh, really, it really is nice. It's a nice rich black, but even if you want to go more black, you can go in with like a, a thin Ill illustration marker in your um, super black areas to make them pop. So I basically outlined her eye and I'm kind of doing a little bit of a, a scribble shading to create the direction of the outside of the eye. So it got, it's darker. I'm going to hold it up close so you guys can see. And we've got the center of her eye, some shadow. And here I'll hold it up close so you can see the detail. So I'm kind of drawing lines starting from the center outward to get that effect. And then I'm going to do the same on the left hand side. So some black shadow underneath that upper eyelid, carry that over. Is actually a little bit of a line for her upper eyelid. And then the shadows. 
and her eyelashes. So I'm keeping the black of the eyelashes mostly in the, the middle here and leaving it fade out because that's sort of how her eyelashes work. They're mostly darkest in the center. All right, and then finish up around the eye itself. I'm gonna ask a question. So Kathy, I'm going to, if uh, I don't articulate it right, feel free to add to the chat, but um, any tips on how to create the focal point of light, just to make sure that we're getting the right kind of view and dimension of it? Um, I would say, so if you're, you mean photographing the face, I'm guessing um, by doing that, I would say always make sure it's, you know, straight on, you've got, um, most of the light right here um, when you're doing a portrait. I think, you know, some of the phones have their own portrait mode, which helps with that too, um, with like the, the flash will help with that. Um, so, but that would be my recommendation is, you know, um, just making sure that you've got a nice amount of light over the center of the face. All right, so I'm just doing the same thing I did over there, here. Kind of just doing this sort of scribbling motion to get the eye texture. And then the same thing up top, not pressing too hard just yet. Um, and then going in darker near the top itself. So now basically we've got our eyes drawn in. Um, and now we can start adding black to other areas too. So I'm gonna sharpen my black and put some here for her nostril and some edges of her nose. So wherever you see the darkest parts, that's where the black is gonna go. Just like that. And then even on the mouth, So just mixing some of that in there with the lip color, blending it together, gives it a, like a, a three-dimensional quality. And then the same here. So just below her lip, is shadow on her face. Put a little black in there. And then um, under her chin, obviously it gets darker. Um, it's a shadow that's basically left by the chin itself. And, you know, it's kind of going a little bit gray, which makes me want to go back in with some warmer tones, but I'll do that after the fact. We'll do some sort of last minute changes here um, by going back in with some color. But at least you get the idea that we're just shading some shadow here lightly and then going darker as we go. And there's even a bit of a, a little bit of black here. So I'm going lightly and kind of working this reflected light that I was talking about earlier. There's a shadow on her face here there's a line of that shadow and there's some light here and that's called reflective light. So it actually is fun when you're creating stuff, um, you know, whether you're drawing actual shapes like a ball or a face to exaggerate that reflective light. It tends to make the imagery pop more. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. All right, so first thing I'm gonna go back or actually, before I go back and do any changes, I'm going to add the black to her hair. I'm just leaving the ear and the other stuff for now. Like I said, if we get we have time at the end, I'll get to that. Um, but I really wanted to focus on just technique. Um, so now, if you look at her hair, there's a lot of black shadow here on the left hand side. I'm going to add that. John, just really um, quick back on the teeth too. Any yeah. 
tips, techniques for teeth, especially if people have like buck looking teeth um, in their picture, yeah. and tips, techniques for that? I would say just go as light as possible until you're at the very end. Um, you know, even with her teeth, like I might add a little bit of black here, but you know, where I started um, was essentially just very light. Um, because I think, especially with color pencil or even pencil itself, if you go too dark, um, you can add too much detail. Um, so I would just say, go cautiously, go really lightly and uh, go from there, you know. Um, the other thing too that could be tricky is the lineup. So um, I would say really when you're doing your sketch, if you have a lot of teeth in the mouth that they're showing, um, try to get it right before you even put down color. Uh, that way, you know, you can always erase your pencil sketch if let's say one tooth is too far over or that sort of thing. Um, it's okay to do that in the sketch area because obviously um, it's not going to be perfect the first time you start. That's not even for me. So um, I would say, you know, try to get as much as you can laid out for the teeth with your light pencil, you know, erase where necessary and redo it if you need to, um, and then go in with your detail. All right, so we've got our hair. Um, we've got some black here in the shadows um, just to kind of help create depth. And then I'm gonna go back into the lips right now. Um, they're looking a little light to me, especially at the top compared to the picture. So I'm gonna go back in with my pink and make those a little bit darker. And sometimes it's hard to see whether something is light or dark enough until there's other parts of your artwork next to it. Um, just an example of that, like, you know, um, something might look white in a certain light, but then you put it in a different light and it looks like a different shade of white. It looks almost like a gray. Um, so once we put these, you know, skin tones next to this, that white to me was fine, but now it looks so white, it didn't look realistic. So I'm gonna go in with, this is um, Hannah again, and redo some of these shadows of the lips. And just looking at my reference constantly back and forth, um, again, squinting helps you sort of blur out the detail until you need the detail. So I'm doing a little bit of that as well. And then here, I'm even gonna add a little bit more shading. And then I'm going to go back in with black again too. But now you'll see they just did look more three dimensional um, than they did before because I went in and adjusted the tones. Back in with my black. Just to push the shadows a little bit more. There. All right, so now I'm gonna go and um, start to work on the ear a little bit. And really the ear is just kind of a continuation of what we did before um, using our colors for the skin. So the first one I'm gonna use is 1034. It is goldenrod. Um, it's one that, you know, there even is a little bit of it here, but, you know, I got my pencil sketch of the ear itself for general placement of things. I've got my detail picture to work from. So kind of, you know, figuring out where to put this color um, based on the lightness in the photograph. All 
that. And then we've also got the earrings here too. So they have yellow in them as well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of that. And the earrings, um, since they're really not part of her face, they're kind of an accessory. I'm not so concerned about them being as perfect as her face. Um, they can be a little bit more suggestive. And then I've got the bangle here. And then same with the other side. Um, we can't really see her ear on this side, but at least we can get some of the earring put in. Like that. Continue downward. And then finish here. So what I'm doing is leaving this white area open as I draw, um, just so it stays the highlights keeps there. So with color pencil, really, if you have any areas where there are light areas and highlights, just leave them white. Um, you know, you can always add color later, but right here, we want that to look shiny. So I'm just leaving that basically white. All right, so now um, for the rest of your ear, the next color I'm gonna use is henna, and which is, DC 1031 um, and start to work in almost like orange tones here with her skin. So you can see it's blending. Um, if I were to use this, I think I brought this up in the previous class, but just on white, it doesn't look the same, right? Uh, but with yellow underneath, it has a golden brown kind of look to it. And that's what we want. That's the advantage of building up layers of color. Um, is really so that you can get nice colors, good blends, realism, depth, all that good stuff. All right. Working in some shadow here, shading. Not trying to be super perfect, um, but you know, suggestive, since this isn't really the focal point. So the focal point should always be obviously with the face, the eyes, the nose, and mouth. You know, those are the, the most detailed things. Um, but everything else on the outside can be a little bit more suggestive. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and put an outline around her ear too, as well just using this color. All right. And then now I'm gonna go in with um, the dark number color, which is 947, which is basically the second color to black I would use here. So she's got some dark shadow up here. Here as well. You know, there's a little bit of red in there in the photograph. If you wanted to add that too, um, it is totally up to you. I just wanted to keep these sort of simple um, since this is a beginner course. All right, and then even using um, this brown, I'm gonna go ahead and add the detail for the earrings. So I know that um, a lot of times if you mix this umber with yellow, it gives you kind of a gold effect, which is nice um, because gold isn't always just yellow. It has browns and blues and whatever else, um, depending on the kind of brown you're using though, this brown is a cool brown and that works really well to make a gold color if you use the warm brown, it wouldn't work as much. Um, and by cool, if you think of like, um, basically if you think of warm colors as warm like fire, 
usually they're on the sort of reddish end of the spectrum where cool colors are like blues and greens and things like that. And there could be cool and warm versions of other colors. So brown, you know, a warm brown would be like an orangish brown and a cool brown would be more of a greenish brown. So that's what we've got here, this greenish brown. I'm going to create the outline for this hoop here. And John, do you learn some of those colors just by kind of playing around with colors too? Exactly, yeah. Um, the more experience you have, the more you mess around with it, the more you'll realize um, the differences between them. <clears throat> and then did it have a question? Is there any tips or a maximum number of kind of layers and colors that you can add in? Um, it's really up to you. I mean, you know, it depends on how detailed you want it to be and how um, rendered you want it to look. So, uh, and the layer thing can even get a little bit ambiguous as you go along, um, you know. So I wouldn't get too hung up on like how many layers you're using, um, just as long as, you know, what you're doing ends up looking good. Because um, it, sometimes it doesn't require a ton of layers, especially when you're getting near white areas, you don't need to add as much color to it. All right, so I'm just kind of got the outline here for the earrings too. And same here, just leaving that white, adding some shadow. And obviously, you know, we only have an hour to do this, so I'm not getting into crazy detail, but if you want to go in and add more shading to the earrings, by all means do it. Um, you know, there's even some reddish tones in there. You could use sienna, uh, or you could use um, henna, or even just a red color, an orange color, and put those in there um, <clears throat> just to finish it off. So, and I think, you know, at, at this point, what I might do at the very end <clears throat> is add a little bit of black outline around it but very faint. So here, you know, the side of her face, just kind of a little bit there, um, helps it pop. Like that. And then the same here. Here, right, just a little bit of an outline um, that helps the image jump out a little bit more. And you can even do that with some of the earring too. Like that. And then I think I mentioned earlier, I was gonna put a little bit of color here in the shadow under the chin. So I'm gonna do that now. Um, I'm going to use henna just because I've been using that. And, you know, not pressing too hard. You'll see just adding that little bit of red in there is nice. Um, and you can do that in other parts too. So like, let's say I want to add some more reddish tones to the face. You can still do that. Just go lightly. You know what I mean? And now it helps it just look warmer overall. Um, and pop even more and look more three dimensional. Same thing with the top, like the forehead, you know, we can add a little bit more shading in here with the reddish tone. Just going super lightly at first until you're happy with it. And then you can kind of go a little bit darker. And even up. I'm back on the the hair um, too is, is, you know, with the, the, even the reference photo, you can't really see all of the hair. Yep. How, how do you finish off the hair, especially when you can't see the full form? Yeah, so that, that's what I was saying earlier is like, you know, you can just kind of make it up, um, suggest it. Even when you do see a lot of hair, I find it easier and more enjoyable to just be expressive with it. It doesn't always have to, you don't have to put in every single strand. Um, you know, uh, if you guys look at some of the other work that I do, I do very stylized hair too, but it's a lot different than this. 
Um, but I think in this case, you know, just kind of creating it, you know, making it up um, based on what hair usually looks like in your mind's eye um, is much more interesting than what you see in the picture, you know. Um, and you can exaggerate it too, like I'm going to add a little bit of black here, you know, just to kind of make it more hair like. Um, and that, that comes with just experimenting too, like just messing around. Um, I would recommend even just sitting down and just drawing hair if you're really interested in getting better at it. Um, try drawing it different kinds of ways until you're happy with it. And then just these little finishing touches to add some color to the skin. Um, because no one's skin is just one color. There is always so many, so much dimension, so many different colors to it. Um, almost, I feel like there's almost every color there is in skin somewhere, um, depending on the lighting too. All right, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to back my camera away a little bit so you can see this fully. Um, and, you know, obviously, if you look, there are discrepancies, right? I mean, my picture is a little bit taller than her face looks. Um, you know, that's kind of the beauty of doing it your own way, right? And making it expressive and making it your own. Um, you know, it, it, to me, it, it's a little more interesting than just copying a photograph straight up. Um, and that's it. Um, if you guys want to show what you've done, I would love to see it. If you want to put it up on the screen, um, that would be great. And hopefully I can figure out how to view everything. Oh, this stuff looks awesome. Aurora's looks fantastic. Um, Monica B, yours looks great too. Some of them aren't showing up. There we go, gallery. Wow, very cool. These look great, you guys. Patty S, beautiful. Rita Fryer, awesome. Um, there's someone did a person wearing a mask, MDSPE. I don't know who that is, but that's awesome too. Um, I should have done a mask. That would have been appropriate, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, really beautiful stuff, you guys. Thanks for coming. Um, and I hope you're all, uh, you hope you all have a good weekend. Thanks again. Take care.